I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, here we have this HP Office Jet 5252 in for service. And it's not very typical for me to service printers themselves. I mean, obviously, I do work on it from time to time because I work on computers, but but I have done it in the past. And matter of fact, I did a video earlier this year of resurrecting an HP Office Jet 8600, and thanks to YouTube's very awkward and weird algorithm, that video has actually gained a lot of attention. So the story behind this little guy right here, this little uh, HP Office Jet 5252, is. Um, I had worked on a computer for someone, and one of their friends apparently uh, was having issues with their printer. Basically, what it would do is it would say something on the lines of it cannot detect um, genuine HP cartridges or blah, 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 even though genuine HP cartridges are installed. And it gets a little weirder from there because she says she has two of these printers. Now, one of them is a different model than this, but they take the same ink cartridges, so they therefore they take the same print heads. And you're looking at this thing, and you're seeing HP Office Jet. At first, I thought this was like a photo of small or something, because, I mean, look at the dang thing. When you compare it to one of these, like this uh, 2760W, or the 8600, which is back here in the closet, which I'll have to talk about that sometime in the future, why it's in the closet and no longer in service. I mean, the older office jets were just massive. Um, they were workhorses. And generally, I regarded them as decent printers. Um, that one right there, it does a great job um, printing photos, and you can do it um, two-sided, which is really cool. But, uh... This one has, of course, the uh, flatbed scanner with a document feeder. And somehow, some way, somehow, you can get into this thing to get to the ink cartridges. I mean, I literally just got this thing not that long ago. Uh, I got it today, actually. So I'm just now looking at it. Paper goes in right here. Yeah, guys, that's a real massive paper tray. <laughs> Especially to compare it to uh, the older office jet like that one over there. So getting into it to service the ink cartridges requires two hands. You lift up and this whole assembly comes up. Pops up like a hood of a car. <laughs> Tell you what guys. HP has definitely gone downhill. I mean, when you compare this thing with gravity, which would it be gravity fed crappy ink cartridges versus that old thing with the 950 cartridges, which um, are like ink tanks. Just not very impressive. My uh, first impressions are not that good of this thing. But let's go ahead and give it a fighting chance. And let's see what's going on with it. So, I got it plugged up to the Cupid Plexi with a USB cable. Um, just kind of plug it into power and let's see what it does. So, the lady said that this thing would actually show an error message on the computer as well as the printer. So, therefore, I told her, I said, that most likely rules out your computer as a problem. So, therefore, I don't need your laptop. So I, didn't, I told her, I said, keep your laptop. I just need the printer, and I'll figure it out from there. So let's come plug this in and let it start up. Let's see what it's going to do here. If it's going to start up. <laughs> okay. So let's see what it does here. It may not be the most exciting video, but I try to take you along for the ride. Considering my last printer video like this seemed to gather a lot of attention. Mm. 
Alright, so we are at the... Okay. There's the error message. So... Remove and reinstall the indicated cartridge, making sure it is correctly installed. If this message continues to appear, replace the indicated cartridge. So, they did provide a set of cartridges. So that being said, So apparently you can't do this as a one hand operation, you just gotta be strong on to do it. Alright, so let's have a look here. Pretty certain these cartridges have the print head built into them. Which, considering the print heads were a failure point on the older office jets, maybe this wasn't such a bad thing, but I think the real problem was HP charging a crap ton of money for a replacement print head. <laughs> All right, so we have our tricolor ink cartridge, whereas the older office jets had individual ink tanks for the different colors. Again, not very impressive. These do in fact have the integrated print head. So we're gonna take out both cartridges. So this is the black ink cartridge. Again, integrated print head. So when you replace a cartridge, you're replacing the print head too. So first thing I want to do is look at the contact points there. I'm gonna probably go ahead and shut this unit down. Let's go ahead and unplug it for now. That way it doesn't try to home this uh, carriage. And what I'm going to do is take some isopropyl alcohol and just try to clean up these connections here and make sure they're good and clean. And I'll do the same on these cartridges. Um, apparently she said that she just replaced the cartridges. I mean, they don't look like they're heavily used. I mean, when they start to... When these things start to get used, usually they'll get really nasty on the bottom. That's just generally how these things do. But they did provide an extra set of cartridges, so I mean, that way we can try that as an option. I'm pretty sure they tried that already. All right, so I'm going to just rub these contacts with some of this uh, rubbing alcohol. Make sure they're clean. I mean, they look clean to me, but there's me at least has a precaution. And we'll do the same to the back of the cartridges. I think sometimes you can get pitting and corrosion on these contacts and that can cause connectivity issues because literally these little joints touch up against the little contact um, surfaces on the carriage. And the fact I'm getting some stuff on this paper towel leads me to wonder if that could have been sort of a problem. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and reinstall these cartridges and let's see what it does. Again, I am not impressed with this printer. Not impressed at all. I much prefer the older office jet.
I'm being honest with you. Now that on this tricolor cartridge, I'm looking at this little contact point right there. You can see it. I'm a little concerned about that. That doesn't look quite right to me. So if this doesn't get things working, I'm gonna try a different cartridge for the magent for the excuse me for the tricolor. See what we get. I plug it back in. Yeah, it's going to do its little boot up again. Still getting the same thing. So the issue is indeed with the tricolor. So that's the one we're going to replace. Then and they're both low. So maybe they did not change the cartridges. I don't understand why. That'd be like the first thing I would try. So, that being said, let's go ahead and replace the tricolor cartridge. Let's see what we have here. Okay, this cartridge here is definitely used. <laughs> I mean, on the bottom, it looks horrible. Look at this, guys. Get you exposure right. I mean, that thing is nasty. That print head is definitely in need of serious help. I'm going to try to wipe it off here. I mean, look at all the junk that's coming off here. But. So let's pop this one in there and see what it does. The issue is not with the black cartridge. Though I did take them both out earlier just to clean both surfaces anyway. I'm sure some of you are probably like, why didn't you check first? But that's why. I just wanted to go ahead and clean the, clean the, uh, the surfaces just to be sure. All right, so I close this up. Let's see if it detects the cartridge. And you can see again. You might be able to see. It's still not detecting the tricolor. Now the part I don't quite understand is how the lady has two printers and she's apparently having the same issue with both. That just doesn't really seem to add up for me. Alright, so I'm taking an X-Acto knife here and I am scoring up this connection right here. That's the one I was talking about earlier I didn't much like. And since I'm going across it with the uh, exacto knife, it's getting shiny. Yeah, these newer office jets. I mean, I'm not real. I'm not real impressed. I've never been a fan of inkjet printers in general. I think they're all throwaway pieces of garbage, but. Sometimes I will take a little bit of effort to try to troubleshoot one. So 
I'm not really sure why <clears throat> we're having an issue with this other cartridge which clearly has been used I mean it's I mean clearly it's been used but I think crappy design equals crappy performance It's like HP purposely engineered this thing to have an issue. Therefore, customer will go back to Staples or Best Buy or Walmart and buy a new one. Still saying the same thing. So it doesn't really help the fact that they provided me an old cartridge. It really doesn't help the fact they provide me an old cartridge. Here's an interesting thing. So I took the Kohler cartridge out completely. And now it's asking, okay, let's let's uh, let's align the uh, print head. Improper shutdown, okay. <laughs> it's wanting to actually print something. And it doesn't even have the color cartridge installed. Unbelievable. And of course, it's playing music for us and gave us a totally blank page. <laughs> you want me to really? You really want me to scan this? Okay, we'll scan it. I want you to use a scanner glass, but obviously, we know something's up. Man, when's the last time they cleaned this thing? I have to wonder if they have parrots. Because uh, my parents have an African Grey, and that thing, that thing makes so much dandruff, it's unfreaking real. And unfortunately, it looks like I get to inherit that bird someday. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and scan the blank page. Hope you like it. That's, that's bizarre, guys. The fact that I removed the color cartridge altogether and it just started printing was not detected. <laughs> the alignment page was not detected. Well, gee. Alignment unsuccessful. I wonder why. Alright, so this, since we have the car cartridge out. Let's pop it back in and see what happens. Cartridge problem. <laughs> Let's take them both out. There's a back to both of them. Obviously, with no cartridge, this shouldn't do much of anything. Cartridge is missing. Okay, the cartridge appeared to be missing. How come didn't you discover that before? These things, I'm telling you, these these freaking inkjet printers. I I tell you, back in 2010, I took a Lexmark and literally just smashed it to pieces with an axe. Uh, somewhere around here, well, it's under a pile of stuff, I got some of the remnants to it. I call that thing the Skidmark X1270. Not Lexmark, but Skidmark. I hated that thing. Alright, with no... Okay, so with no multi-car cartridge, let's see what happens again. <coughs> it's 
single cartridge mode. This thing is just bizarre, guys. If both cartridges aren't... You gotta read the message and then change the freaking message. Piece of crap. Alright, so it can actually operate in single cartridge mode. I didn't know these newer printers could actually do that. Normally they want you to have... There's some printers out there that literally will not let you scan a page to a PDF or a document or whatever without there being ink in the cartridges. Okay, so apparently it's all uh, happy with uh, just a single cartridge in it. So let's pull up the uh, Plexi here and send a uh, test page to it. It's just printing out totally blank pages. How lovely. I don't know, made a friend needs to be cleaned. Who knows? There's hardly any ink on this. Now, I'm going to say this cartridge is probably just out. So I'm going to... They do have a brand new black cartridge. I would like to get this color working, though. See what happens when I put just the color in. I'll try the old one first. Cartridge fucking up. Make sure it's down this time. To me, it seemed like there's actually a problem with this carriage. For the fact that it's doing this with multiple cartridges. Yeah. The fact that it's doing it with multiple cartridges. Give me that. So I wonder if this thing has an accessible connection for this ribbon, which is something I have to do with the printer off and unplugged, but makes me wonder if that could be part of our issue. Okay guys, I want you to have a look at this. I'll try to do the best I can here. Have a close look at the um the connections there for the multi-car cartridge. Get this will focus. There we are. Look at the connections for the color cartridge and look at the, con the uh, connections for the black. The color definitely looks like there's more pitting and just wear in general. And I just I'll just say that this is just not a good design. It's really not a good design. The carriage is non-replaceable. And, I mean, this thing obviously has a lower yield on its cartridges because the cartridges are so freaking tiny compared to the, like, for example, the HP 950 cartridges. I just want this thing's just worn out. I mean, they didn't make these things to last, obviously. They made these things to break after maybe only a couple of years to make it to replace the dang thing. With these ink jet printers, it's either they make them cheap so they don't last, or uh, they just completely pull support all together for them. I'm looking at you, Kodak. Yeah, this is now this is why I just don't I just don't like ink jet printers in general because they're they're I, I think of them as pieces of garbage that are throwaway. They're, they they design them to where you buy the thing, you might get a few years if you're lucky out of it. What the heck is this thing doing? Carriage jam. Now you think 
Did you forget that the door was open? I was in here working on this thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you guys, it just. I am not impressed with this thing at all. Um, but I do think that the um, <clears throat> not sure how well the video has turned out here, but um, there we are. So I'm looking at the wear on this carriage, and you know she's telling me she has a second printer that takes the same cartridges. So therefore, we have the same crappy carriage. It could be a, it could just be a coincidence that she has another one of these pieces of crap printers <laughs> that it's uh, having the same problem. And I was talking with her on the phone the other day, and I I said, uh, well, I was I, I told her how to look at it. I, was like, I can't make make any guarantees that I can fix it. Um, you may have, it might be worth more. You might be um, more worth your money to just replace the printer. And she said, well, not with an HP, right? And I said, you know, I'll just have to look at it. But yeah, looking at this thing, I wouldn't recommend this thing to anybody. They basically took a, a pretty solid machine like the Office Jet 8600 or the, what is it, the 276 DW I have sitting back there. Pretty solid machine. And they cheaped it down into this crappy design. I was looking at it, and it actually does have a duplexer in it. They got the duplexer hidden inside the printer. So, yeah. On the duplexer, I, I, I like to call it the butt that sticks out the back on the other model. But, uh, the other model, the other models were definitely a more solid design. And the only issue I have with the other models is the fact that HP does not offer print heads for a reasonable cost. If they offer print heads for a reasonable cost, you could easily keep the machine in service because apparently the print heads on those machines are one of the common failure points. But there you have it. I mean that's that's the way I ended up that's the way in case you was wondering, that's the way I ended up with that office jet printer in the back of the uh, computer room here. The first one um, I got for for free from somebody. The print on it's good, but the scanner has issues. Whereas that 276DN, or D, excuse me, DW, um, the whole rest of the printer was great, but the print head was messed up. So, <laughs> there you have it. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the cartridges back in this thing, and I'm not looking for any miracles with this thing, to be honest with you. But, I think there was probably two things going on here. So, if we look at this cartridge right here, I'll show you what I did to it. So, right there, that one contact, it looks like it was a defect. This, uh, it looked, it looked like that little pad that was covered with a film when apparently it shouldn't have when I look at the existing cartridge. I mean, look at them side by side and you can probably see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna say that this cartridge here came from a different factory. The uh, print head, which is this little thing here, and it goes around to the bottom. Um, it looks like this one came from a different factory. Probably a cheaper design. Of course, HP probably will go for the cheaper option. To, you know, do I need to tell you? They went to a cheaper option. Therefore, have more defects. So I think it's a combination of a crappy cartridge and a crappy design on the printer in general. <laughs> so I'm going to pop these back in there. And like I said, I'm not expecting any miracles. And for the time being, I'm not going to even open this other cartridge. I don't want to break the seal on it considering she may not even want the printer anymore. She may want to go and get another printer. Alright, let's see what it does. <laughs> Cartridge is missing, really? I'm 
back up one more time. I mean, this is just, this is just such a bad design. I mean, it's hard to tell. You can, you can see with this locked down, you see how much I can wiggle these cartridges? I'm telling you guys, it's, it's just a crappy design. Now the black, the black actually seems pretty locked down. This, with this color, I can easily wiggle it back and forth. And I mean, it's so important to have a good connection on this in order for it to be able to talk to the cartridge. But, we are talking about HP here, so... And, apparently these newer units... Okay, see, so we're back to the remove and reinstall the indicated cartridge error. And you can see, <laughs> still not detecting the color cartridge. There you have it guys, let's go and end this with a look at an older office jet. Why not? So, of course one of these days I might clean this room up. You got too many things going on. So this is the Office Jet Pro 2760W. I want you to look at the size of the cartridges in this in this printer. So this printer has a massive black and three separate color cartridges. And I gotta I gotta find me some replacements soon because these are actually pretty low. But the, the thing still prints fine. Um, it printed out a really nice graphic the other day, a color image. It did did a really good job of that. But uh, I mean, you you look at this printer. This thing is a workhorse. This thing was designed to sort of try to compete with laser printers. I mean, <laughs> obviously. I mean, now for monochrome, like my brother, monochrome laser printer, much nicer, obviously. But for an overall um, kind of jack-of-all-trades printer, scanner, fax machine, I mean, this thing's pretty dang robust. You know, I'm not going to pull all this out, but this one does have a removable print head. Which actually, I got one right here. This print head does not work. It's uh, yeah. This is one of the ones that failed, and I'm looking at it, and I just don't quite understand what's going on with it. I think it's probably plugged up with ink, and I I may try to I may try to save it in a later video. Who knows? Um, I may try to save this print head because the Office Jet uh, AD600 I got in the closet. The scanner's messed up on it, but I can still use it to troubleshoot the print head. And at the least, I can maybe get this print head going again and have a spare print head for this one. But yeah, print heads removable. These ink cartridges are literally ink tanks. Um, they actually, this thing has a little pump in it that I think, I think pushes air pressure on these guys to make it do its thing, whereas the other ones are just gravity fed. And you can tell by the size, I mean the sheer size of these cartridges, that this printer has a much higher yield. So, you got the 950 black and the 951 um, color cartridges, individual color cartridges. You got this massive, massive paper tray. And again, doing this with one hand. There you go. A little dust in there, but look at how much paper you can put in this thing. It is unreal. This thing you can put a lot of paper in it. I mean, it was designed to be a workhorse. And on the back of it, it's got the duplexer, which I like to call the printer's giant behind. Now this here was clearly designed 
to be a workhorse. That, however, <laughs> that one was designed to be e-waste. I'm afraid there's not really much I can do with it. I'm not gonna. I mean, considering it would be, it would be more worth the customer's time and money to just replace the printer altogether. I don't really see it being worth my time to really try to deal with this thing because I think, I think we discovered that. There's definitely something going on with that carriage. And these things, as, as cheaply as they are built, just don't really see it worth my time to fix. And don't see it worth the uh, customer having to spend the money for me to fix this when they could go buy a new, a new printer. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well everybody, that wraps up for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Leave a comment, subscribe to Kukun channel, and be sure to tick the bell that way you get notified of new video posts. Also, I recommend following Kukun Company on Facebook. A link is in the video description. In addition to computer tech videos, I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Links are available at the end of this video. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching and your support.